Miracles from God are happening every day all around us. They come in many different shapes and forms, but one thing is undeniable. They all have the fingerprints of God on them, and they're things only God can do. Right now, you'll hear a testimony from a couple who experienced an incredible miracle of God's amazing love, power, and grace. You're watching Living Miracle here on Catalyst Stories. Hi, I'm Dan Oyakawa. And I'm Christine. Uh, we've been married for 30 years this October. Um, our daughter, Ashlyn, um, she's 23. And we have a son named Matthew, who's 26. We dated for... We dated for eight years eight before years, that. Eight years before we got married. When we are dating, I, I prayed, I prayed like a lot um, that she would become a Christian. Um, she wasn't a Christian at the time. And I, I tried witnessing to her and all kinds of stuff, taking her to church, but nothing seemed to work. At church, um, there was the, the um, what was it, the World Vision. World Vision. Um, were to, to run for um, the, the Long Beach Marathon, half marathon, and to, to raise money for, for, for drinking water, clean drinking water. And so my daughter, Ashlyn, wanted to do that. And so she asked me, you know, will you train with me? Because I'm going to run my first half marathon. Uh, sure, I'll go ahead and do that. And so that's what that began was the, the training to that um, half marathon. Yeah, I haven't really been training, so I needed to start training again. And then one night after work, I decided to go run at Orange Coast College track. <laughs> and usually, or sometimes when I run there, there wouldn't be anybody there. Like I would be the only person on that track. <laughs> but that night, on, on June 27th, 27th, 2017, there were people on the track. And I just started running. And I had a, a running app on me. And it tracked one lap and then the start of the second lap. <clears throat> and I was at the top of the, the track. And that's when it stopped. And that's probably when I had the heart attack was right after the start of the second lap. And <clears throat> I don't remember any of it. People said that that people on the track, s some walked by me, and I guess they thought I was just like laying on the ground. And I thought that was kind of weird, you know, like who lays on the ground on the track, right? But, um, someone there was conscious enough to, to check on me and realize that I didn't have a pulse. And I, I guess they started CPR on me and called uh, 911. The 911 operator contacted the school because the school security um, guard came over and opened the gate to the track. And the way the track is positioned, the, the track is like here. The parking lot is way back here, and I'm at the far end of the track. And so I'm the farthest distance from where the parking lot is. The, the security guard opened the gate so that the crews and the uh, ambulance can drive directly onto the track. And that saved a lot of time, a huge amount of time. <clears throat> On that day, um, we had just, my daughter and I had just come home from exercise class. And my son actually happened to be home that day too. So um, I got a call and it said Hope Hospital on the phone, but I just thought it was kind of weird. So I didn't answer it. And then um, it rang again and it was still Hope Hospital. So I answered it that time. And um, the nurse said that Dan was in the hospital and that, you know, it wasn't looking good. It looked like he had a heart attack. So um, the kids and I went to the hospital 
And then when they got, we got there, um, they said, well, it's not good because, you know, he really didn't have oxygen for like 40 minutes. And so that the only thing they could do was just um, give him hypothermia treatment so that they could cool down his body and then um, all the um, blood would go to his brain to try and heal his brain. So um, I said, go ahead, just do it. So that was all I could do. There was, it was just like, we were in shock because I didn't even know he was going mining that day. Usually he would tell me, but that day he didn't say anything about it. So I didn't even know he went mining. So um, they just admitted him to the hospital. Like they weren't even worried about what caused his heart attack at that point. So they just wanted to get his brain healed and everything. So I um, started the hypothermia treatment for, they said, 24 hours. And so after they did that for 24 hours, he really wasn't responding at that time. They said that there was really no brain activity. It was like Thursday, Friday, and they took another brain scan and they said that he probably wasn't going to come out of that um, like coma he was in, that he would still be in a vegetative state. It was just devastation because there, we thought there was nothing we could do and, you know, that we are going to have to make a decision of, you know, is he going to live or is he going to die at that point? So it was a complete devastation. I just um, really didn't know what to do. So actually I spoke to the chaplain at Hope Hospital and because I was trying to be strong the whole time for everyone else. But when I saw the chaplain, I just broke down and just started just crying and just, you know, saying I didn't understand why this was happening. Me meeting with a chaplain was not something I would normally do because at that time I wasn't a Christian. I hadn't accepted Jesus into my life and I was just someone to talk to. I guess it was easier to let my guard down with a stranger because in front of my family and kids, I was just trying to be strong. So I just let it all just go um, when I met with the chaplain. In the morning, they told us that he didn't have any brain activity and um, that he wasn't going to come out of his vegetative state. But my kids were in the room um, during that time because they were just spending time with him. And they said, no, he's moving, he's moving. And they're like, no, it's just, you know, reflexes or whatever, him moving. But they go, no, he's moving. So then they took another scan in the afternoon and they said, there is, you know, brain activity that the scan shows that there was, um, that it was healing and everything. So it was just a miracle from in the same day from going from a low to like a high. It was just amazing. So I knew it, was, it had to be God's hand, right? Because nothing like that happens, just happens. Um, and it was, I, now I look back, I know it's all the prayers that everyone gave, you know, because every day there was just people every day coming in all day long. I didn't even get to see them because there was just so many people. I mean, we almost got kicked out of the hospital because we had so many people in the, you know, in the cardiac ward. It was definitely God had his hand in healing him and, and all the prayers that Everyone was just giving. Um, I had what was known as the Widowmaker heart attack, and I've people told me that um, I'm very lucky to be alive to survive that. That like really had an impact on me about how serious that was and how fortunate I am to be here. Like. Later on, um, after I had recovered, um, I was taking class at OCC, and the last day I thought, I'm gonna um, go to the security guard, uh, the security office, and see if that guard was there. I have no idea who he was. And he was working that day, and I was able to meet him and, and thank him. And when he saw me, and he goes, wow, I didn't think you were going to make it. I totally did not, did not think you were going to make it because they shocked you about six or seven times on the track. And um, 
you just did not look good. What he had done was he, I didn't have any identification on me and he reached in my pocket and found my keys and he walked up and down the parking lot looking for my, my car and then he found it and he found my wallet and he found um, my ID and he contacted or he gave it to, to the paramedics and then the, the hospital contacted my wife. Our family decided to um, visit the, the fire station. I had no idea which fire station it was. I, I called the, um, uh, the Coast and Lisa Fire Department and, said, and asked them, you know, which station covers Orange Coast College and they said, oh, it's fire station five, I think. And, and so we went there and, and we said hello. And the, the paramedics weren't working that day, but the chief was working that day. And he, he even said, wow, I'm so glad that you, you came by to say hello, because we usually don't see what the end result of what happens after we leave you in the hospital, right? Well, he said, you know, we didn't think you were going to make it because you looked really bad. Um, the paramedics were shocking you a bunch of times. And then once we got you, but your heart started again, that's when we transported you to Hove. Um, we started going to Catalyst in December of 2017, and um, we started coming. And um, in like the Easter service, I um, decided that um, I wanted to be saved. And um, later on, um, my daughter decided that she was going to get baptized in September of 2018 so I went to with her to the class Pastor Barry had and then um, I decided to get baptized too but I think it was really when I got baptized that I really uh, understood what being a Christian was more so um, yeah that it really changed my life becoming a Christian right now I think I'm the most at peace and um just more um, I can identify with um, myself more and um, just be happy with who I am. I'm just so grateful to God for just everything he's done for our family and keeping us together, keeping us safe, and just for the love and support um, that all of um, our Cato's family, our family has given us through this difficult time. And uh, we just want to say thank you to everyone that's been with us through this whole journey. And um, just, we just are so thankful just to God. And it was through God that Christine um, acknowledged you and, and accepted you into her heart. Um, it was just through your grace, Lord, that um, that all of this came came together, and th and that I'm here, and that I've recovered, and that I'm a living a normal, happy life with Christina and my my kids, Matthew and Ashlyn. Just through faith, just through and through God's grace, that that I'm here to tell my story.